Welcome, welcome everyone to the Veterans Who Build show. I'm your host, Adam Stark. Today's episode is going to be an introduction to the show. I'm going to be chatting about the show's purpose, about how we're going to support the veteran community in the built environment. Got some really exciting content coming up. I know you'll love it. Please subscribe to our channel on YouTube, on Spotify, and on Apple. Please like and comment as well. Leave a review. Let's get it. Thank you to our channel sponsors, JetBuild. If you're looking for ways to better manage your real estate development and construction projects, look no further. Jet is the command center software for end-to-end real estate development and construction management. That's www.jet.build. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Veterans Who Build show. I am your host, Adam Stark. Today's episode is going to be me. I will be presenting the show as a kickoff, right? Explaining why the show exists, what our purpose is, what our goals are, what we're going to accomplish, how we're going to help veterans. I'll present the general theme, the general guideline of how the show will be structured for each guest, who the guests are. Then I'll dive in a little bit into my story and my experience to give some context, some examples of what we will hear from veterans in the built environment and bring some key talking points, some, some key frictions that we face as veterans, bring them to light. Uh, let's, let's get it. So what this show is, is veterans in the built environment, right? Veterans who build. So the built environment, what does that mean? That's all things, real estate, commercial real estate, architecture, engineering, construction, construction trades, general contracting, technology, whether that be property tech, construction tech, build tech, finance tech for real estate, lenders, so everything, everything built environment, material suppliers, manufacturers, right? Everything that is involved in buildings, right? Built environment, infrastructure included, right? So roads, right? Everything built environment. So we're going to be pulling, we're going to be highlighting veterans and their stories in the built environment. We're going to be tracking stories on a chronological order. So we'll start with kind of just a brief of childhood, where where you grew up, right? What what made you want to serve, to enlist, talk a little bit about their service. And then from there, once you get that kind of context and relatability with the, with the person, right? As a, as a fellow veteran, we'll touch on the transition from military to civilian life, and then from civilian life into professional career, built environment, and what, what those stages meant, what those stages were like, you know, what, what were takeaways, what are uh, lessons learned, what, what is advice, you know, that, that you would give, you know, you being a, the, the veteran, you would give to your former self, to a, a uh, younger generation of, 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 you know, someone who's thinking about enlisting, someone who's currently discharging, right? So bringing to light the hardships that exist from transitioning between military to civilian and then civilian into professional career. That'll really be kind of like the meat of of the show, of the purpose of the show. Uh, Give kind of this roadmap for veterans to hear and, and create relatability with themselves, understand they're not alone in that process understand that others went through it, hear how others went through it, hear how others succeeded through it, right? How they're finding themselves today, how they 
you know, got transition their, their headspace, transition their mentality and their day-to-day lives. What we're also going to touch on, which is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll call a secondary importance, very important as well, but secondary importance in, in my opinion is, uh, translatable skills, right? So it's, it's kind of a, a subtopic almost, but however you want to kind of consider that. So translatable skills, why that's so important is because that that's also a means of, of supporting and recognizing for yourself of how you can leverage the skill sets that you learned in your military career in civilian life and especially in professional life, right? In that kind of a structured environment of profession, right? So th- those are kind of the, the two key elements that we're going to be pulling from the show, right? So that's roadmap for transitioning between military, civilian to professional careers and the translatable skills that, you know, we're seeing from ourselves or seeing from maybe our colleagues that are also vets. Right. So that's kind of the roadmap that we're going to set, that we're going to bring to light, that we're going to talk about, right? We're going to allow for people to talk about, allow for people to recognize people being veterans, allow for veterans to recognize that it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to struggle between those phases of transition, those difficult transition points. And then to kind of wrap that up, we're going to touch on, you know, career wins, future aspirations touch on some personal stuff like wellness practice, recommended books, recommended readings. And that'll kind of be the, the flow of the show. Uh, that'll be that, that roadmap that we're going to set for others to hear. So uh, taking that and, and bridging it to, you know, my, my own experience. Um, you know, I, I remember, I remember as, as young as 12 years old, maybe even it was around 10 to 12 years old. You know, I, I was adamant. I, I was keyed into, oh, I want to be, I want to be in uh, special operations, right? I want to be a special forces uh, warrior. Um, and I, I almost feel like I, I kind of geared my childhood toward, toward that aspiration, uh, in which case I, I achieved. And then, you know, after, after discharging, right. Thinking, thinking back in hindsight, um, and just talking with, with veterans, uh, recognizing, uh, you know, lessons learned for myself, recognizing, you know, what I could have realized better laughing at myself, right. Being, being light about it is, you know, if you, if you think about what that experience is like, it's, it's years of, of extreme hardship, extreme dedication, uh, extreme motivation, um, extreme precision, lots of these kind of, you know, difficult day-to-day achievements that are continuous for years on end in extreme environments. And during that process, not only is it, you know, difficult, a hardship for you personally to achieve mentally, uh, and physically, emotionally, but in in that experience, you're also experiencing those moments together with your brothers in arms or sisters in arms. In my case, brothers in arms. So I'll continue referencing that. So you're creating this sort of tribe, this sort of bond that's incredibly unique, um, and that it's honestly kind of difficult to describe or. Uh, uh, create a relatability with outside of military because, you know, or I hope you're not really experiencing that kind of, uh, you know, e- extreme, um, you know, environment in your day-to-day life. So, um, you know, coming out of, of service, what ends up happening is, you know, you're going from this extreme brotherhood or sisterhood, right? For me, brotherhood. You're going from this extreme uh, environment of performance. You're going from this extreme, you know, mental and physical, uh, you know, dedication and achievement and hardship. And then all of a sudden you're 
environment as well, extreme environment. And then all of a sudden you're on your couch, right? You're, I don't know, going to school with kids. You're, I don't know, starting to work, right? With colleagues who might have literally zero idea what, what that means, right? What, what, what military career means. And, you know, it's also, I think, particularly interesting about that scenario is that even if you end up next to surrounded by, you know, family, close friends, even people you served with, right? That doesn't actually always translate into support. And what I mean by that and why I'm saying that is every one of us, of course, has our own experience, right? Every, everything is unique to ourselves. Granted, you know, we've created this bond, like I talked about, it's similar experiences, similar, similar to the degree that, you know, you can't uh, explain it to someone, right? Nonetheless, it's still each individual and their own experience, right? And their own being. So that when you discharge and all of a sudden you're a civilian, even with a close support system, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to translate into what you need for yourself in order to allow your you know, mental state to transition, your spiritual state, your psychological state, right? All of these kinds of uh, you know, whatever that means for you, however that translates for you, um, any combination of those things. That's, I think that's really the, the most difficult piece to recognize for yourself. And what I found that was so interesting for me and I, and what's crazy is, you know, I'm 10 plus years out of service and, um, I've just started listening to other veterans, other podcasts, other shows, and, I'm hearing their experience and I'm hearing what they're talking about and how they've transitioned and, and, you know, hardships they went through and struggles and, and wins that they had. And all of a sudden it clicks for me and, and, uh, you know, just having those different pieces of experiences from different people who experienced similar things to me, that was just shockingly helpful. It was so amazing to hear, oh, well, that's funny. I, I didn't even really think about or realize that I was doing that. But now that I'm hearing this person talk about how they did it, well, now all of a sudden it clicks for me, right? I didn't I didn't realize other people were also dealing with that nuance, that dynamic. Um, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna just laugh at myself and I'll give it a, a literal example where um, you know, having having things in order, right? Having structure to the day, having uh, your you know clothes folded, your bed made, your uh, just whatever stuff around the house, you know, kitchen stuff, things around the house, them being in order versus not being in order, right? Being put away, being neat, et cetera. Not being put away, not, not being messy and all this. I mean, it, it, gives me such levels of anxiety and stress and, and friction. It's, it's, I mean, I, I'm la I can laugh at myself about it. That doesn't mean it goes away, but I guess at a minimum, I can laugh at myself about it. And I remember I was listening to a show and, and I heard someone talk about this exact dynamic and, and, uh, it, it was, it was a, just an amazing, um, realization for me that, you know, this person came away with those characteristics, you know, maybe, uh, maybe expanded on, or maybe, uh, exaggerated from, you know, military, which I would say is what happened to me. Meaning if I was a, a tidy person, pre military, now post military, it's exaggerated just from those experiences of, of, you know, if your, your gear is not set, right, then what does that mean? Right. If you're, you know, not sharp mentally uh, because you got a mess around you, then what does that mean for your operation, right? So it's it's that kind of mentality that translated into my day to day life of okay, well the clothes got to be put away, kitchen's got to be sorted, got to be tidy, 
et cetera. And that was the the recognition that this person was able to provide me with just by listening to him and his story. Um, and, you know, there's, the reality is there's, there's dozens of more examples that I've heard. That's just one that was really interesting and really powerful um, for me to hear. Uh, Cause I just never thought of it, right. It was just kind of stuck in my head. Um, and it's not something that, you know, I, I didn't talk about it. Uh, not, not intentionally. It just kind of was there. Uh, so I didn't know to talk about it. I should say, uh, I didn't know to recognize it, I should say. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm drilling into this example only as a singular example out of many that exist. And out of these many examples that exist, these small wins are so impactful, right? So let's say we get, you know, someone on the show, they talk about their experience, their transitions, what was good for them, what translatable skills they have right? Have recognized translatable, translatable skills they've recognized. And imagine if one of those things click with someone, two of those things, a few of those things click with a, a few veterans, right? That's serious impact. And you can't, you can't disregard the potential domino effect of that impact as well. So let's say, you know, you're holding, I'll just use my example again. I'm holding this friction because it's, you know, messy in my home. Uh, trying to work that through with my, through with my wife, and you know, I'm just I'm getting heated because it's something that causes me anxiety, but I don't understand why she rightfully so doesn't understand why, right? Because it's so it's it's silly, right? Well, the next thing that this person said was, well, realize that if you got a problem, then do something about it, right? And what he meant by that, and he, you know, he elaborated further, he was talking about this as like a lengthy kind of story and recognition and such. What he meant by that was, well, then why don't, why don't you clean it up, right? You meaning me, right? It's, it's your problem, right? You're the one who's having friction over it. So why don't you just handle it? And you know what? He's a hundred percent. And that kind of brought me back to a book I read, um, Extreme Ownership. Um, unfortunately, the the name of the author is slipping my mind, but um, it was written by by a, a, a general, uh, and it's just about taking ownership of, you know, what, what you see, right? So if you recognize something and you perceive that thing that you've recognized as a problem, as an issue, as a friction, as a whatever, well, you, you therefore have the opportunity to do something about it. So, um, you know, just back to my silly example. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put the thing away. I'll clean up that, you know, that mess. I'll tidy up over there. Cause that's, yeah, that's, that's my problem. That's my, that's my friction point with myself. So, you know, going back to, uh, you know, finishing, reversing from this rant that I got into going back, reversing to, uh, discharging and, and, you know, starting, uh, civilian life, uh, starting university. Um, you know, it's very, very strange experience, not, I mean, just literally not knowing how to handle myself, right? Literally a different environment that was, I mean, quite literally the opposite of the environment that I just became a, a person in, right? Enlisted at 18, right? Discharged. And now all of a sudden, you know, I, I went from being a, a kid in high school, right? To, you know, post operations and, I didn't know how to handle myself, right? I didn't know how to, you know, what to do other than, you know, just put my head down and, and, and do what I thought was, was right. What was best, go, you know, go to class, do the, do the homework, do the whatever. Um, but that was a, a serious struggle, um, which, you know, didn't, didn't have to be. And so I could imagine that, you know, if I had, if I knew to, key into to, to some, you know, veterans speaking about their experience, speaking about their transitions. I guarantee you that would have been helpful for me. I guarantee you that would be helpful for other people. And so, you know, in, in hindsight, it, you know, I would have, the advice I would have given myself in that uh, experience would have been, uh, you know, just track stories, right? Uh, try to try to just pull in as much information as possible from as many veterans as possible that were older than me, right? That that had gone through this process of transitioning from 
uh, military to civilian. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very sure that I would have been able to piece a lot of things together that would have made sense for me and my journey uh, to help me kind of get through these uh, mental blockages, I'll call it, uh, or, you know, just feelings of uh, unrelatability, for lack of a better word, right? Being in this environment, thinking, you know, oh, well, nobody, nobody here can relate. So I'm just, I'm just alone, right? Well, got to break through that. Got to learn how to solve that for you, for yourself. And, uh, you know, again, going back to my examples of hearing other veterans talk about their experiences, that that's, that's helpful. Uh, that was very helpful for me. That's very helpful for a lot of people. Um, so my hindsight again is to explore and learn from other veterans, hear them out and apply that to you, how it suits you. Right. So that doesn't have to be this, some like literal one-to-one -one application. It doesn't have to be literally everything they say has to apply to you. No, it could be bits and pieces. It could be some parts of some things. Just adjust it for what it means to you. Right. These are people that are, uh, ahead of your kind of trajectory, right. You being a, a younger veteran, me talking to my younger self. Right. So it's just, it's like having a mentor, right. It's like having a boss that you're learning from. It's the same concept. Just leverage them as mentors, leverage information, leverage experience. Um, from there, you know, just starting my career working for uh, builder owner operators uh, in New York City. Um, kind of just opportunity happened um, post uh, undergraduate degree. Um, and it was really interesting experience where, you know, a lot, a lot of, a ton, a ton of translatable skills uh, that I immediately saw and recognized. And that was because, you know, you get, you get thrown into a uh, construction job site for a high rise property. And all of a sudden you realize there's, there, there's chaos, there's safety necessity, there's uh, interacting with a ton of different people from different companies, from different trades, right? Deadlines are very important. Schedule is very important. Um, so it was a really interesting accidental kind of shift, but alignment in terms of, you know, shifting into professional career and into a, a trade that I was learning. Uh, but at the same time, alignment with those key elements that I just touched on, right? Uh, just the, the ecosystem, the environment, right? You got, you got manual work, uh, you have hierarchy, uh, you have you know, again, schedules that are, that are very important to stick by. If you want to keep your, you know, project budget, if you want to get paid, um, interacting, right. Communication with, with lots of different people, lots of different perspectives, different objectives, right. Different trades. Um, so it was, it was a very interesting, uh, shift and that's why, you know, I'm very keen on, uh, the purpose of the show, which is to kind of bring to light that connection between, you know, military training and profession and how it is translatable to, you know, the business of the built environment. Um, there's, there's just a lot of really neat translatable skills, right? Crisis management, uh, you know, thinking, trying to be as proactive as possible in terms of decisions, um, you know, re resolving things on your feet, uh, pooling information together to provide a, a best foot forward. Uh, these are all kind of construction, uh, you know, dynamics that you need to be good at. Uh, but I'm bringing those up because they're also, you know, military skill sets that I recall being trained on, right? I recall perfecting uh, with, with my team, right? Um, I think there's also a, a really nice community uh, in the built environment, um, same as you know, brothers in arms, right? Sisters in arms. So, um, really nice translatable skills, uh, which I'm very excited uh, to hear all of our guests speak toward, right? Speak about, and so that'll kind of wrap up, you know, in short, my story. Um, and short on purpose because I want to I want to focus on our guests. I want to uh, 
you know, be the one to provide a platform and, and ask pointed questions, bring to light other veterans experiences. Um, so, you know, to wrap up what I was saying about myself, uh, the advice I would give my former self, my younger self is, uh, seek out other veterans expert, hear their experiences, right? Seek them out, hear their experiences. I mean, today it's, it's so easy because of YouTube and podcasts and how, uh, abundant it is in terms of information. Uh, very easy also to find local, uh, you know, support systems. So, um, seek that out, right? Seek that out and figure out what that means for you and apply it to yourself, apply it to, uh, however that will, that will help you in your experience. Uh, so that's the, the, um, that'll be the, uh, advice I would give my former, my younger self. And I hope that, you know, anyone listening here, uh, can take that advice and allow it to help them. And then in terms of those translatable skills, I mean, man, there's, there's so many, I was, I was mentioning them before, right? I mean, you got, uh, you got that crisis management, but I think that's a very important one, right? Issues are always happen on job sites. How are you going to resolve them, right? Where, where is your head going to be? Are you going to get flustered? Are you going to, you know, lose your cool and and not be able to make a, a level-headed decision? Or are you going to be able to charge forward and and make the best decision possible in in the circumstances that are in front of you? So crisis management—that's a big one. Communication, right? The ability to communicate with uh, dozens of stakeholders, right? A lot of different people from a lot of different places with a lot of different responsibilities on the project, right? You got everything from a plumber to a lender. So how are you going to manage those different teams? How are you going to relay information to those teams? How are you going to pool information from those teams and make a good decision? Uh, you have uh, schedule awareness, right? So time frame awareness, right? I'm translating that from, let's say, an op and you know understanding your timeline for that op versus understanding your schedule for your project. I mean, that's critical, right? Schedule is the going to, going to dictate the, the project budget, right? Which obviously is everything, right? Without the cash, then the project is nothing. So those are, are a few skills that come to mind. I mean, there, there's really so many though. And then in terms of, you know, career wins, future aspirations, um, I'll say career wins. Yeah. I'm going to throw it at this, right? This is a career win being able to do this, getting sponsored to do this shout out to jet.build, uh, for sponsoring this, this show. Uh, that's everything from the equipment to the platforms that we're recording on, uh, to the time, right. That we're providing, right. To, to bring in guests and such future aspirations. I mean, it's to change the industry, right. That's to, uh, provide a platform that enables efficiency, right. That's a broad statement, but, uh, that that's the aspiration, right. Provide the platform that enables efficiency. So things like housing could get built more efficiently, right? To solve that crisis that exists, right? More housing, uh, let's say better hospitals, better roads, right? Just efficiency, right? Provide efficiency to the built environment uh, via technology is is kind of the core behind that statement. Uh, let's kick it with uh, some wellness practices and some favorite books. Um, so on the uh, wellness practice side, um, you know, what really was a life-changing uh, scenario for me. I was a few years back. I finally, finally gave in and started doing yoga. And that's everything from uh, flexibility to mobility to calisthenics. Um, and what that did for me was really uh, open up and, and resolve a lot of, uh, you know, military injuries um, that were, you know, just not going away after trying a whole slew of different PT, different exercises, different this and that. Yoga is something that has really allowed me to uh, kind of alleviate uh, these aches and pains. Uh, they still exist. They're still there. Um, but I still get after it. I still address it with, you know, just becoming more, more flexible, more, uh, uh, more able to uh, move with purpose, right? Just moving better, moving better has allowed me to feel better. And so, uh, there's that, that's my, my wellness, my wellness bit. Um, 
always happy to dive into more on, on the wellness side. Um, I take that uh, pretty seriously day to day. And I'm hoping to have some good conversations on that front as well with, with guests that come on the show. In terms of favorite books, The Power of Now is an unbelievable read. Uh, I like audiobooks that I just uh, better kind of uh, comprehend, better embrace uh, the, the material that way versus reading. Uh, so I like The Power of Now audio because it's uh, narrated by the author. Uh, absolutely incredible book. Um, the Book of Joy, also narrated by the authors. I uh, highly recommend that on audio. I'll leave those two out there. Those are just two that come to mind that I feel are just really nice for um, uh, you know, mental, uh, mental health, mental wellness. Um, I feel you just can't go wrong with those books. Uh, they're you know, well-renowned, so it's not just some random books I'm throwing out there. Um, they're very, very well-known, uh, so highly recommend those. Uh, if, you, if you read them, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, reach out to me. Let me know what you think. And that's that's a wrap, guys. So that'll that'll guys and gals. That's uh, that's me in a nutshell. Uh, in short, um, again, I, I'm really producing uh, this platform to spread awareness, spread the recognition that it's okay, right? It's okay to have those struggles. It's okay to recognize that you can feel those struggles. You can talk about those struggles, and you know you can seek other experiences, other veterans' experiences to help yourself. So um, with that, I want to uh, throw another shout out to our sponsors, Jet.Build. Thank you. I want to uh, please ask that you subscribe to our channels. So that's YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. Um, I want to ask that you also please uh, leave a review on Spotify and Apple. That helps the channel a lot. You know, like, comment, uh, and Hey, I'm I'm real real excited to uh, to show you what we got in the pipeline, right? To to show you the episodes that we have in the pipe, uh, for you to learn from uh, these legends uh, that we got on the show. Uh, and if you think you're a good fit for the show, please reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can drop a comment here. Uh, thank you, everyone. See you soon. Thank you to our channel sponsors, JetBuild. If you're looking for ways to better manage your real estate development and construction projects, look no further. Jet is the command center software for end-to-end -end real estate development and construction management. That's www.jet.build.